Hi students, welcome to Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. I am Anirudha, your physics faculty. And today we are doing a quick take on projectile motion. This chapter has become important because there have been a few questions in this year JE. And this is what most students fear with regards to motion in a plane. So I'll tell you all that you need to know with regards to this to solve your JE questions. And we'll even quickly go over all of them. So here's all that you need to know for projectile motion. You need to know the equation of a trajectory. You need to know the standard formulas because they will greatly speed up your problem solving in exams. And you need to know the evolution of the kinematic variables in each axis. So let's take them on one by one. First up, what is the equation of trajectory of a projectile? So we know that the projectile's motion is a parabolic path, which means if we have the x and the y axis with this being the x and this being y, a projectile that is launched at an angle theta with a launch speed u, that is going to trace out a parabolic path as such over here, which means its y coordinate, its y coordinate varies with regards to its x coordinate. And if you take any point over here, which has a certain value of x and y, then those would be satisfied by its equation of trajectory, which is given by y is equal to x tan theta minus half gx squared divided by u squared cos squared theta. This has a nice ring to it, which means if you say it two, three times, it will get stuck in your head. So that's the best way to do it. Don't just write it down. Say it a few times, you'll see it will come very naturally to you. So that is the equation of trajectory. Based on this, why is this equation useful? Because you might be given questions where they tell you that what is the position or how far has the projectile traveled when it is at a height given by a certain value of y0. Then if you know that this, this is the value of y0 from the graph, you know the distance traveled will either be this or it's this. Generally, since they tell you about how it lands on a surface, it is generally given by this value, so you can get this x0. The way to get that, put y0 here, solve it, you'll get a quadratic equation of x because x is given here as a quadratic equation. You'll get that, you'll get two values of x. One would be for this point and another would be for this point over here. This x0 1, this would be x0 2. So that is where the equation of trajectory is important. You can even do it the other ways, but this will again speed up the entire process. Let's look at the next thing that you need to know, which are the standard relations, which means for the regular projectile where the regular projectile, you start from ground level and it lands at the ground level. You have the important quantities, which is the time of flight, which is given by 2u sine theta by g. Again, launch speed is u and the angle of launch is theta. Then you have the time of flight. That is the total time it takes to come move up and land down here as 2u sine theta by g. Important point to note, only depends on the vertical component u sine theta, does not depend at all on the horizontal component. Next is the horizontal range, which is how far the projectile moved. This is the horizontal range r given by u square sine to theta by g. What is the point here? Depends on both things. Even though over here you see that u x into t, so it, it only depends on the horizontal speed. But because it depends on the time of flight, that is why it also depends on the vertical speed. So that over here, second point to note, it has sine 2 theta, which means the maximum range happens at theta equal to 45 degree, where 2 theta makes it 90 degree. So maximum range would be u square by g. Next up, we have the maximum height, which is h over here. This is capital H, and that is given by u square sine square theta divided by 2g. Again, this depends only on the vertical component of the velocity because it's just u squared sine squared theta by g, which is u sine theta whole squared. This again, as we learn about kinematic variables, depends directly on the single dimensional motion. Both of these, this depends on the two dimensional part. Next is the resultant velocity, which is v cos alpha is equal to u cos theta. What do v and cos alpha mean? Say they tell you at any point you have what is the v is in this direction. Remember the speed changes, you launch it at u, but at any random point, the speed might be different. So you have the speed at a point v and the angle it makes is alpha. Then v cos alpha has to be equal to u cos theta. Why? Because the horizontal component v cos alpha 
is just going to be the horizontal component u cos theta because that does not change remains the same so v cos alpha equal to u cos theta can help you easily find what the speed is at any one point or if the speed is given what the angle of inclination of that projectile is at that point okay so these are the standard relations that you need to know it will greatly greatly speed up your je preparation your je exam solving but remember this is only for landing at the same level as you have launched it at let's look at the next one which is understanding that there are two separate kinematic cases happening in the two axes one in the vertical direction one in the horizontal direction so this projectile motion the speed is broken up into its two components you have the u cos theta here you have the u sin theta over here u cos theta controls the horizontal motion where there is the initial launch speed is u cos theta absolutely no acceleration because no one is pushing in that direction so the velocity even after time t stays the same of u cos theta so that is a horizontal motion it's just a normal motion with no acceleration over there it's moving with uniform velocity for the vertical motion it's a different story because launch speed is u sin theta it's the sin theta component so initial velocity is that but here you have acceleration because gravity is pulling on that particle downwards so the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity and because of that u sin theta when you launch it's same as you throw a particle vertically up it's exact same case which means velocity after time t vy is u sin theta minus gt which was just if you recall v is equal to u minus at comes from there itself just replace u with u sin theta and a with g next this covers most of the three things that you need to know and i'll show you based on this how you can deal with the other cases as well so the most common case that you'll expect in je for projectile motion would be the horizontal projection over here and in that case again if you break it down into the two parts which is the horizontal part and the vertical part you can solve things in a very easy way because the horizontal when you launch it horizontally the horizontal speed ux is equal to v not the speed with which you launch it and that does not change because there is no acceleration in that direction so it keeps moving at that speed in the vertical direction now if you look at it in the vertical direction is just like free fall you'd let it go from rest which means uy at the starting point is equal to 0 and from then on you let it accelerate you deal with it from then on in the same way as you would do with free fall you'll get the time of flight same relation as the time of flight for a free fall dropped from a height h and horizontal range would just be then the velocity vx into t which is just v naught put this t in here so just understanding these two separate motions will help you move forward next up if you want to find the velocity with which it hits the ground then vx remains the same v naught but vy is given by minus gt again free fall same relation so you get it over here root over of 2gh and since you're finding the resultant you have one in the horizontal one in the vertical so square them up add them up and put them under a root and you have the actual velocity so the best way to deal with projectile motion is to deal with them as independent variables be comfortable with motion in a straight line and you will be comfortable with projectile motion as well thank you so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one with some other topic